do the Colts win this game? And I'm not going to ask you who's going to win the game, but how do the Colts win this game? And he gave us, I thought, a very uh, uh, lengthy and good answer. How do the Broncos avoid losing this game to the Colts? And while you're talking, do you want me to get you a piece? No, because okay. I will eat it rather than talk. Okay. I can, tell, I can guarantee <laughs> that. Um, look, I think their defense has to show up in the playoffs on a consistent basis. Now, it's been better this year than it was a year ago. But one of the things that I think they've leaned on at times, and I saw it in the Cincinnati game a little bit, was that they, have to, they often at times have to get a lead in order to allow their defense to kind of play free. I think that those guys, Ware and Miller, have sit there and say, look, it's not about whether the offense does anything. We have to try and stop them. Because if you allow the Colts to get on any kind of early roll, if they score you know, 7 or 14 in the first quarter, first quarter and a half, that's where their confidence is built because they're purely an offensive team. They're a fast break team. They want to get out. They want to get out and score points. And you have to stifle that part of it for what the Colts are. We asked a question of each other yesterday, and we'll ask you <coughs> this one. Uh, you somewhat are agreeing with what he said yesterday. He thought DeMarcus Ware, who has disappeared in the second half of the season for the mm -hmm. most part, uh, solid but not anything spectacular. He thought DeMarcus Ware was going to come to the forefront against Colts. I'm, I'm quoting you accurately. Yeah, I, I thought he might be the most important and, player and for the Broncos. I, and, on and Sunday. My, I and my, my belief is uh, that C.J. Anderson, that if they can get him out early and he's running the football, then that allows Peyton to use his play action passes and to work, work, the, work the room, as I call it. Well, so, uh, I would agree. I would not, like none of that is wrong, but I think that again, if you go back to how do you stifle <coughs> and get the Colts out of what they like to do, and again, they want to score early, they want to score fast, they want to take the pressure off of their defense, which is really an undermanned group. All right, they're not they're not extraordinarily talented. You know, maybe Vontae Davis, you know, maybe Toler a little bit, but not overall, not a really deep defensive team, I should say. Um, and so if they've got to take pressure off of their defense, they've got to score early in games. When they've done that, they've been okay. If they don't score early in games, they're a completely different unit. This is a gimme, all right? This is going to be a layup for you. Um, given a good supporting cast, mm -hmm. how are we going to be talking about Andrew Luck 20 years from now? Probably in the same terms that we talk about John Elway. Um, you're, if, you talk, if you draw up a quarterback and what they're supposed to look like, in terms of enough speed and enough athletic ability to get out of the pocket and make things happen. You talk about a big enough arm. You talk about intelligence. You talk about you know, savvy and understanding. Luck is a carbon copy. I mean, he's not exactly what Elway is, but he's about as close as it gets. And again, referring to Bill Polian, who called him the Statue of David, he said, that's what we considered Elway in our era. That he's the Statue of David for quarterbacks of our, you know, 30 years ago. Andrew Luck will be the next generation statue of David of quarterbacks.